there's always all kinds of crazy creations here at RC Creations. And this one, this one takes the cake. So to start discussing this, we need to talk about the fact that this was part of the RC Creation 2024 RC Building uh, Challenge. And this year's challenge was dynamic weight transfer system. The goal was to be able to have a third control. So first control, of course, is the skis, turn left and right. And then second control is throttle up or braking. Now the third control would be something else, such as a, a rider on top of the seat that would move left and right, or something that would allow you like a flywheel to control um, a little bit more than just the skis and the track. As far as I can tell, I've never seen twin track with active movement. So here's how it works. In the back, you've got two tracks side by side, and both of them are essentially independent. So they can go wherever they want. They both have their suspension. They can do whatever they want, and they are connected indirectly to a servo via a third spring. This one is the normal spring for the suspension. This one controls the front of the skid. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. And the third one here is just to try to put some preload. Some snowmobiles have that shock. Most of the time it's not needed. But I felt like with this snowmobile with so much pressure here in the front, the back would just kind of fly up a little bit too much. So I decided it would be interesting to have a bit more preload pushing that rear arm a bit and putting more pressure at the tip. How it was built is two alpha rails that were extended to be essentially sort of a 165 track. Um, the track itself has to be very specific. It, well, it has to be extremely narrow to begin with. So what I did, I took the alpha, uh, alpha track and I made little tiny baby pieces, little pieces. It was a, uh, interesting to put that track together it took me forever but little baby track uh, let me get a yeah this is the normal track it's an old track but you get the point like it's minuscule so i had a second plan a b plan which we're going to discuss eventually uh pretty soon so let me show you this this is plan b uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that later. Not in this video, but we're going to talk about it uh, pretty soon. Enough talking. I think you guys have been waiting for long enough. Let's put a battery in it and see how it works. So, battery. And the reason why it looks so ugly is because all of these parts were kind of test pieces. You can see there's a little axe here. It's because they were part of the development or improvements of some of the parts. So a lot of the parts will be smashed and, you know, it's not necessarily pretty, but as long as I can show you how it works, that's all that's important. So I've got my transmitter here. This is a FlySky uh, FST6. It's an old transmitter. I've had that for a long time. So turn that on and turn it on. Okay, so first channel is steering. Nothing fancy here. Second one is throttle. And reverse. And third one. Oh yeah. I'm sorry, this one is control and it's pretty easy to play with throttle as well, so. I would have liked the system to put a bit more pressure down, but it seems like it's pretty difficult to put pressure down. Hopefully, once we're in the snow, it's going to put a lot more down and it's going to be easier to carve. Because as you can see right now, it doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot. It is moving nonetheless. So, um, I said earlier that I decided to put the pressure point here. Why there? Well, if you have ever ridden a snowmobile over a stump or a bush or a rock... Uh, let me turn that off. It always seems that... Once your rock is just over here in the front, it's always trying to pitch you left or pitch you right. If it's at the back here, well, it's just putting pressure on the front skis and it's not really trying to tip you left and right. But if it's pushing, if their rock or something is pushing here at the front, it's very easy to flip your sled over or tumble you. So I decided here would be a more interesting point. 
So we're going to give it a test. And if it doesn't do what I expect it to do, we have some more mounting point where I can hopefully try to mount it here in the back and see if that does anything. Hopefully something happens. Otherwise, it's going to be a whole lot of wasted time. But that's why we're here. It's to try new stuff. One more thing I forgot to say. It was never meant to look like this. So the plan was to have this little servo horn or something similar to this connected to that servo with a hard solid rod that would spin this and this little pivot would connect to this front arm here and it would push it down completely like the entire arm would push down because it would be on a second pivot so it would go down and it would change the way the pressure is applied here it ended up not working and the reason is actually pretty simple in hindsight the thing is the track is a fixed length and usually what dictates the length of the track is the distance between this front pulley and this back wheel. So if you move this, the entire skid pushes back and of course the track cannot be longer or shorter as you drive, so it wouldn't work. So I decided, you know what, let's change the design a bit, make this a fixed point and just move the lower section here. So at least this is somewhat working. We're gonna see what it does. So let's bring it outside and give it a test. Okay, so we're now outside. Just so you know, temperature outside is just above freezing. So the snow is kind of weird. The snow is crispy, but then it remelted. So I don't know how it's gonna do, but we'll give it a try anyways. Let's do it. Okay, so let's give it a shot with the uh, just the normal driving, just forward and steering, and we'll add function as we go. Okay, so far so good. Okay, now let's apply some tension on one side. I didn't like that, okay. The other side. I'm trying to play with it left and right, and I really don't see any difference whatsoever. I think it's probably because of how the snow is. It's kind of stiff, but I can sink. Um, and the sled is also very low to the ground, so maybe if my center of gravity was much higher, it would help. So let's keep driving a bit and see if I can maybe show a little something. I don't know what happened here. Oh, I think my track came off. Yep, looks like the track came off. I'm not too surprised. It's a long track. It's very narrow and it can move left and right. Let's get out of here. I shouldn't be able to do that. Oh, okay. I might have lost a nut that's right there. Okay. Let's put back, uh, let's bring it back inside and put a nut in there and hopefully that's going to help it. So I replaced a little nut by a collar, like I usually do. Just uh, decided to put a nut there for a second. But back to collars, same thing on the other side. Now, uh, also tightened the track because it came loose a bit. So maybe that's the reason why it came off the back wheels. It was getting loose. Let's give it another shot and we'll see what we can do. I would have been curious to know what it did on the streets. Like, would it give you more stability when curving? However, the condition of the street is not great. So we're gonna stay in the snow, which is not bad, but let's give it a try.
So as far as I can tell, I really cannot see any difference whatsoever if I push one side or push the other side while turning left and right or going straight. I really don't see any difference whatsoever. Of course, it's difficult for you guys to, well, imagine that because you're not having the controls in your hand and the visibility is quite low with you seeing through the camera. I mean, you're not there in person, but it really doesn't do a whole lot. Okay, so the only thing different I've noticed so far is when I'm turning, if I push the, uh, if I turn left, for example, and I push the right skid down, it helps turn. And if you do the opposite, it's getting more difficult to turn. I'm gonna put both sticks to the left, which means the pressure is in the outside skid. So when both of the skids are turning in the same direction, it turns very sharply. Now let's keep turning the same direction, but push the inside skid in and do the same turns. It takes a lot more to turn. So let's go back inside and put the shocks to the rear and see if that helps in any way. I'm not exactly sure when that happened, but part of my center shock kind of fell apart. So I think I'm going to have to cut it short now. It doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot anyways. So let's wrap it up. So. What did we learn from such a test? Well, first of all, when you get new shocks, always put thread lockers on these because they will get loose every single time. So I thought I did, apparently I didn't. But realistically, what did we learn about this entire suspension thing? Um, well, it's got something to it. I feel like there's potential here, but we didn't really see anything spectacular. We didn't see a whole lot of gained control over a stock snowmobile. If anything, I think just the fact that the system is there weighs the snowmobile down. I don't think it's going to help us. I think there was an improvement when the front suspension was attached to the front because when it was to the back, I didn't really see any difference whatsoever. Um, it seems to be doing good when you turn in the same direction. Let's say you turn this way to the left. And this one is pressed down, this one, the uh, the outside one. It seems to turn a lot easier than the opposite side when it's down. So I think what happens is since you're turning this way, the snowmobile has a natural tendency to try to lean in the opposite side. And when you put pressure here, it makes the turning radius from this point to this point very short. But when you do the opposite, it puts the turning radius further back because uh, there's not much pressure in this section, the opposite section, but there's a lot more here. So I think it's just that the turning radius, uh, the, the, the turning point is instead of being here in the front, it moves to the back. So it makes it more difficult to turn. I think that's what's happening. It's kind of difficult to explain it. It's kind of difficult to even um, try to grasp the concept but I think that's kind of what's happening. I don't think this solution has any like viable potential in a backcountry world, which is where I tend to spend the most time. So, I mean, it was a fun concept to try it. There could be more to explore and test and develop, but as far as I can tell, this is where I wanted to, uh, to end the video and end the test. I'm gonna publish this video so you can see it and participate in the challenge. It's a bit late for you to participate right now, but uh, for the ones that did, I'm happy you did. Uh, there's going to be a video looking at the results of that, and then I'm going to give away the prizes. So I don't know how many people are going to show up. I'm going to adjust the prizes in consequence, but I have at least two prizes, and uh, they're, bo they're both worth over 50 bucks. So good prices, beautiful prices. So there we go. 
Uh, with that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you had a good time watching the video. And uh, yeah, thanks for riding with me.